from our front room and it's over these indoors today for a bit of a change um, but I thought I'd just do a short one today having a look at something I've been doing recently um, for anybody who might not be familiar with this process. Now if you are, forgive me, this one's not for you but if you're not familiar with it, let's have a look at it. So I reckon most people watching could probably put their hands on a piece of waterproof clothing that they've got that isn't exactly waterproof anymore. I know I can. This is an old pair of Rab uh, waterproof over trousers that I've had for probably about 10 years. I discovered the other day that they're letting in a bit of water when you're out in the rain. So what we're gonna do is have a bit of a look at the possible ways to stop that from happening. So what I've found is, generally speaking, it's not the actual fabric itself that's letting the water through. The problem area is generally the seams. So obviously these pieces of fabric are stitched together in the factory. And when they're stitched, the fact that there's cotton going through the two pieces of fabric to hold them together means there's holes down here. So they seal it at the back with some seam sealing tape. Now what I've found is after a long period of time, 10 years or so with a pair of pants like this, that seam sealing tape tends to break down and that's where your water's getting let in. So let's have a little bit of a closer look at that and see what we can do about it. So I've turned the pants inside out so we can have a look inside. And in certain areas like this, this is original factory seam sealing and it's still in pretty good condition. It's all still intact and that will be keeping that seam waterproof as it should. But in other areas like this, you can see the seam sealing tape has really broken down and there's a big gap there where the seam isn't sealed at all. Now that is going to be able to let in water when it rains. So what we're going to do is have a look at replacing the seam sealing tape on this section so it looks somewhat like that again. So this stuff is seam sealing tape. It's not particularly expensive. I think it's about $6.99 a roll. Um, you can get it on eBay, on Amazon, um, and you can get it in different widths, as you can see. Uh, quite a lot on a roll, probably enough to do two or three, maybe four garments on a roll. And it's made up of a couple of different layers. Um, the outside is kind of a, a mesh sort of fabric type layer. And the inside has a layer of glue on it. Now to get that glue to work, to stick to your, your fabric, it needs heating up, it needs melting um, so that it'll stick over the seams. And what we've got to do to get that to work is to heat it up with an iron. So let's go and have a look at how we do that. So you can see here, this is a section I've already done, which has turned out quite well. And this is one of the last sections that still needs doing. This is a section I've done here as well. So what I'm gonna do is take this tape and cut a section, just a section that's long enough to work on easily. It doesn't need to run the full length of the seam. You can overlap it easily enough, that'll work. But cut about, I don't know, a six to eight inch section off. And that is going to be the position that's going to sit in. And now we need to get to work with the iron to get that stuck on. And this is where you've got to be careful. So I've got my piece of tape in place there, making sure it's directly over the seam where it wants to be. And we're just using a regular iron, nothing special. Set on about a medium to high heat. And what we're going to do is just use or try and use the very tip of the iron. What you want to avoid is melting the fabric around the tape with the rest of the iron. Now that can be quite difficult, but if you start just with the tip of the iron and work it along the tape, what we're doing is melting that glue into a liquid so it'll actually stick to the fabric and the seam below and stay in place. So once I've done a little section like that, I'll give it a push 
and make sure it stays in place. That's helping the glue stick. And hopefully that's our first little section done. So we've got an anchor point now. We can work all the way down that seam, down to the bottom. So that's that little section done, that run down to there. So what I'm going to do is cut the next piece of tape, that's just going to overlap a little bit onto that one and carry that on down to the end here where it needs to finish. But the trick to it is to get the glue hot enough with the iron to melt and become a liquid so it sticks, but not too hot so that it melts the fabric underneath and also not to melt the fabric of either side of the seam with the rest of the iron and also not to melt your fingers that's quite easy as well so i'm going to carry on and do this section down here and that's going to be the final section to hopefully make these pants waterproof again so that is the pants done and dusted and finished and hopefully next time i go out in those they're not going to let water in now, it's a bit of a general approach to it. Sometimes it might be the fabric that's letting through. Sometimes it might be the seams. Sometimes it might be both. But what I've found myself is, generally, it is the seams. Now, it's a bit of a time-consuming process, um, but I feel it's worth it. You know, if you've got an expensive pair of pants like this or a jacket that you're not really using anymore because it's letting water in, then for the sake of $6.99 and a bit of your time, you can potentially pull them back to being a usable waterproof piece of kit. So I hope that helps somebody out there and maybe you, you feel like you can possibly give it a go, get yourself some uh, seam sealing tape and an iron and have a go at it. And if it does, I hope it works out for you and you can rescue some waterproofs. So I think that's gonna be it for this one. Uh, thanks very much for watching, hope you enjoyed it. And we shall see you next time. Ta-ta for now.